Welcome back. Well, before we went into break, uh, we were actually talking about the entire pharmaceutical space, which is buzzing in trade today. So just a couple of stocks which are in focus today. I'll start with Alembic, which has given an update on the very tentative as well as final approvals that they have received for their drugs in Q3 of FY24. So they have received a total of eight drug approvals, which include five final drug approvals, which means that they can launch immediately, and uh, three tentative drug approvals for uh, the USFT. So those still need final approval for Alembic to actually go ahead um, of, uh, in terms of a launch based on any kind of settlements, etc. Separately, we have Lupin, which is buzzing in trade today. There is a report by Nomura where they have a buy call. They've raised their target price to 1593 versus 1290. They believe the margins are expected to improve over the next three to four years with US launches growth in India as well as EM, which is emerging markets and Europe. Now, separately, uh, the entire pharma pack seems to be buzzing today. And a lot of the analysts have attributed it to the fact that there has been an earnings recovery in the past couple of quarters, margin uptake in the past two quarters as input prices have softened and they expect it to probably sustain. Price pressure in the US has also come off to 5 to 6 percent versus a peak of around 10 to 12 percent. And drugs such as Revlimid Generic seem to be contributing very handsomely to specific stocks such as Cipla, Dr. Reddy's, Natco, Sun, Zydus, etc. And uh, however, just keep your eye out in terms of valuations because on an EV to EBITDA basis, on a trailing basis, it's at around 25 times FY23 versus a historical 10-year average of around 18 times, indicating that, yes, valuations have run up for the entire space. But um, separately, lastly, before we get to Bino, I just want to point out that there is some news with regards to the pharmaceutical space where the US F FDA India chief is now moving out and transitioning to China as the head of uh, the China office. So India will be getting a new US FDA in, uh, commissioner. So that will be something that the street will probably take note of as well. But let's get uh, Bino Patirampal, who is the head of research at Ilara Securities and looks at pharmaceuticals very closely to join in on this conversation. Bino, hi, welcome to the show and wishing you a very happy new year. Uh, let's start with, um, you know, Alembic. That stock is up around 5 odd percent. What do you make of the eight approvals that they've uh, got for the quarter? Anything significant? Do you look at the stock? Very happy new year, Ekta. Mm, starting with Olympic, uh, as you um, said rightly, they have um, issued a release yesterday with eight approvals from the US FDA. Uh, you have to look at it in the context of how the US business is panning out, the US generics market is panning out for the entire pharma pack. Uh, you have seen significant turnaround in the business across the board, uh, especially in, among the larger companies who have a big product basket in the U.S. and big set of approvals in the U.S. Uh, the price erosion in that market has come down, which is in very low single digit or, or possibly almost close to zero in my view. Uh, possibly this cycle is long enough because we have a very big uh, patent cliff, a uh, very pretty long patent cliff running all the way up to 2028 or 2029. So all these are boarding well for companies uh, which have a good business in the U.S. or have good filings in the U.S. Alambic is one of the players as well who has set up huge facilities, invested significantly for ramp up in the U.S. business. And the environment in the U.S., Genrix market looks perfectly set to favor such companies. And Alambic is going to be one of the beneficiaries. Right. Um, we know what other stocks from the pharmaceutical space do you like right now, given the sort of run-up that we've seen? Yes, it hasn't been as much as the run-up that we've seen in other sectors, but a run-up nevertheless. Um, what offers value? What offers the maximum gain potential, say, over the next one to two years? Like you said, the um, stocks across sectors have run up in pharma also. It has run up. Um, it is uh, indeed a struggle to find uh, cheap stocks or value stocks in this environment. Um, so I would uh, tend to go with uh, the stocks which are um, uh, primarily uh, levered to the U.S. Genrix market, where I expect the situation to improve from here on as well. Uh, in all these stocks, which has large contributions coming from the U.S. market, uh, be it Cyrus Life Science, um, Sun Pharma, Lupin, Plant Pharma, Orbindo, 
uh, all these names, I expect significant earnings upgrades to happen. On current analyst estimates, uh, the valuations look stretched. Uh, but if the cycle plays out strongly as I anticipate, we may see significant earnings upgrade, which can further give upside to the stock prices. prices. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's difficult to find uh, cheap value in this market. Okay, all right. Otherwise, difficult to find cheap value in this market. Um, what about specific India plays? Say something like a Mankind, which has given such good returns, strong brand recognition, strong share in the Indian market, and has zero uh, sort of play within the exports. Would that be of interest? Do you see further upside in a stock such as that? So the um, India-focused uh, uh, players or players who have a large contribution to profits coming from the domestic market have done exceptionally well over the last four or five years. Um, there also the valuations have stretched quite a bit in my view. Um, it is a bit concerning also that the domestic market growth, pharma market growth has not been that great over the last 12 to 18 months versus historic expectations of uh, 10 to 12 percent growth in the market we have seen um, mid to high single digit uh, growth in the farm, domestic pharma market which is a bit concerning and that was sort of that has been sort of reflecting in the company's report of numbers as well so far the market has not punished um, the stocks for a lower growth uh, the expectation built into the prices is that the domestic pharma market growth will pick back into the low double-digit zone. Uh, and accordingly, the company's reported growth numbers will also go up. If that doesn't happen, there will be a risk to these stocks. Uh, but as of now, the momentum seems to be uh, helping these stocks. Okay. And just a quick word, uh, Bino, with regards to a couple of these stocks which are also aided by Revlimid Generic. Eventually, the opportunity is probably going to dwindle away. Is definitely going to dwindle away by, say, Ma you know, when competition enters in Jan 2026. Uh, but do you think that a lot of these stocks, such as, you know, the likes of Sipla, Sun, etc., Natco, uh, they all are getting this additional boost because of Revlimid Generic in specific, or are there other triggers which are helping them X of this? So uh, I believe the US market um, has turned around quite a bit and has become profitable across the board and not just because of generic Revlimid. Of course, generic Revlimid is adding to it, but the profitability, uh, the pricing, et cetera, and other products has also improved significantly. Um, so the upside we are seeing in the numbers is not driven exclusively by generic Revlimid. Uh, having said that, uh, in Jan 2026, the generic um, Revlimid opportunity will see a sunset. Um, at that time, uh, we, we could possibly see a year of um, decline in our, our EPS for some of these companies, especially for uh, Natco Pharma, where uh, uh, majority, probably more than 75% of the current earnings is coming from generic level limit and possibly Dr. Reddy's, uh, where again, uh, nearly half of the profits is coming from generic level limit in my estimate. Uh, but for other players in, in that market, um, probably around only 20% of the profits are coming from generic travel limit uh, for the likes of Sun Pharma, um, uh, Cytos Life, uh, Cipla, et cetera. For them, uh, there could be a year of slow growth because of generic travel limit going away in FI27, uh, but I don't see any significant hit on earnings in terms of uh, decline. All right, uh, Bino, thank you so much for joining in and uh, giving us your view on a sector that is abuzz in today's trading session. We will, of course, keep coming back to you as and when there is a development in the space itself. Before we slip into a short break and move forward, just keep an